And thank you very much for the invitation and for the organizers for organizing uh, uh, this event. Um, thank you for uh, giving us the chance to voice a voice during these uh, 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 troubling times. As I go along with in, in my lecture, you will see how dearly appreciated this initiative is. Um, so in my presentation, I will focus on the consequences of the 7th of October uh, events and uh, the war in Gaza with regard uh, to two issues. Limiting The first is limiting the freedom of speech of the Palestinian citizens inside of Israel, that I belong to this minority, and connecting it, and this is the second issue, um, uh, with the effect of this limitation on Jewish and Palestinian relations in, in uh, what I refer in my research as mixed cities in the making. So I will delve into a specific case study where during the war uh, on Gaza, these spaces are being more and more contested by Jewish activists who are against this evolving process of urban mixed spaces in which Jews and Palestinians live in the same urban space inside of Israel, resulting in oppressive attempts of displacement of, a, for now, one Palestinian family. But what is more troubling in, in this, this case that I will present is the collaboration that we see before, between the enforcement system, uh, the local government in, in promoting this, uh, these actions which I see as a kind of a attempt to displacement. So before before I move, before I start, it's not moving or is it? Ah, here we go. Before, before I, I uh, move on and talk about uh, what's happening inside of Israel, I thought that it would be uh, important to provide some uh, initial data on what is going on now uh, in the war. Uh, in Gaza. So just basic data, as you can see here, this is from last week. The, uh, the, the data on the Israeli side is not updated, so I will give you an update now. But even now, a week after, um, uh, the casualties in Gaza are uh, coming up to 30,000 uh, approximately. Uh, the data in Israel is a bit different. So uh, inside of Israel, 1,500 uh, are already dead. Uh, it's Israeli citizens and foreigners, out of which 570 are soldiers injured. The number is uh, not double, but it's about uh, 12, uh, 11,000 injured inside of Israel. In Palestine, or in Gaza, and in the occupied uh, West Bank, which is another territory that we don't hear much in, in the news because we are so much focused in Gaza, which is which is the right thing to do. But there are also a lot of uh, uh, casualties uh, that, is, uh, that is happening also in the occupied uh, territories. Besides these data, it's important also to note that there are uh, there were about 250 Israeli uh, sit foreign and foreign citizens that were kidnapped on the events of the 7th of October, about 100 already released, among over 35 dead, and uh, 135 are still uh, captured and held in Gaza. So uh, besides um, the casualties uh, in, 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 in persons, we have also a mass destruction of the infrastructure in, in Gaza. So as you can see here, about 360,000 homes are being are destroyed and are being destroyed as as we speak. Um, um, it seems that 12 buildings are destroyed uh, are destroyed every minute in in Gaza. Educational facilities were damaged. Places of worship, uh, uh, mosques, and uh, um, uh, churches were also damaged and some demolished totally. Uh, but hospitals is the main um, institutions that are being targeted by Israel, claiming that there are uh, Hamas weapons uh, and headquarters in some of the hospitals. But eventually, we, we have a, a, a lot of hospitals that are not functioning anymore. Uh, ambulances damage, uh, bakeries, <laughs> which are the main source for uh, uh, for food and for people. 
in, in Gaza. Besides uh, these numbers, so we have about 1.7 million people, which is about 85% of Gaza's population who are displaced. Most of them are now uh, 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 refugees inside Rafah. Uh, which I don't know if you have heard, but Israel is threatening uh, to invade despite worldwide uh, opposition. So, uh, as I said before, every in, in every every hour in Gaza, there are 15 people killed, six are children, 35 are injured. Besides the displacement within within the Gaza uh, Strip, uh, about 200,000 uh, Israeli citizens were. Uh, evacuated from the settlements around uh, Gaza after the attack of the 7th of October and near the Lebanese border. So I, I, I put here some images, not very, dist well, disturbing, but there are much more distur disturbing images. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the destruction in the Gaza side, the destruction that happened also on the 7th of October. A very big difference is that what happened on the 7th of October, it was very traumatic and so on, but it's kind of physically stopped in the 7th of October, where, I, where as the war in Gaza has been continuing now for three months, and we see destruction, more and more destruction on a daily basis. Um, it's not moving? Why? Oh, okay. Patience? Patience is not a woman's, uh, <laughs> but uh, should I just escape and put again? That's right. The women are the best multitaskers. <laughs> multitaskers, but impatient also. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I'm seeing well. Yeah, but I wanted to put ah here. So these are pictures of the the kidnaps. Uh, on hostages in Gaza, and here are the dis displaced uh, persons who, uh, uh, unfortunately, we see every day they keep moving from one place to other after being evacuated by the Israeli soldiers. So, um, and then this is only part of the story. I'm leaving out uh, other aspects that concerns the fish vicious torture of hostages and prisoners inside the Israeli prisoners who got captured during during the war, uh, who end up dead or wish to be dead after a massive uh, a torture. Uh, another very important aspect that I also left uh, left out and needs to be uh, discussed is the gender uh, violation, uh, uh, rape, and uh, sexual uh, uh, violation that was that happened in the 7th of October that is also being investigated now. So, but I think that you kind of heard more or less of these very disturbing data. I want to go to a, another place and to speak of the of an unspoken. A part of this reality that concerns the Palestinian minority inside of Israel, and this is what I will address in my in my talk. But for those of you who don't know or are not familiar so, uh, too much about what's happening in Israel and what's the uh, population of Israel, so here are a, a, a just basic data on 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 uh, Israel's demography. So in Israel, by numbers, it's nine million, about nine million, nine million and a half. Eighty percent are Jews, and twenty percent are a Palestinian Arabs. I belong to the Palestinian minority. Um, it's important to uh, state that three hundred thousand of the Palestinian minority who live in Jerusalem, in East uh, Jerusalem, uh, do not have Israeli citizenship. They only they are only residents, so they don't enjoy or they don't have all the civilian rights that the rest of the Palestinian minority has. They only they cannot, for example, vote to the parliament. They can also only vote to the local government, and also they have very limited uh, rights. So um, the Palestinian minority is also stuck again here. The Palestinian minority inside of Israel is also a very diverse minority that is compromised uh, with 
uh, uh, diverse religious groups, 80% uh, of the 2 million are, uh, are Muslims, about 9% uh, Christians and 9% are uh, um, Jews. And uh, but just, just to say one sentence, I don't have much time uh, to elaborate on this, uh, the Palestinian minority inside of Israel um, uh, kind of um, struggle to reconcile their uh, citizenship, their Israeli citizenship with their, uh, with our ethnic uh, and national uh, identity. So although we uh, formally are supposed to have uh, all the formal rights that uh, uh, our Jewish counterparts have, uh, there's a lot of then discrimination within within in, uh, Israel. Um, um, clear discrimination and more complex and complicated uh, disc discrimination. So this is just a very, very uh, quick present, uh, uh, introduction about Israel's population. What is also important to know is that Israel uh, suffers from a very high rate of segregation, not only between uh, uh, Palestinians and Jews, but also Palestinians within, within their localities and Jews within their localities. So we have uh, religious uh, Jews living uh, uh, seg uh, segregated from uh, ultra-Orthodox Jews and from uh, religious Jews and so on. 70, most of the Palestinian minority live in totally segregated uh, uh, localities, cities and, and villages. In some cases, as I said, Within these localities, there are segregation uh, based on a religious affiliation. About quarter of the Palestinian minority resigned, uh, reside in urban uh, mixed cities. I, um, in, in my work, I differentiate between what I call uh, historical mixed cities, uh, which are uh, mixed cities that um, uh, have been there even before the establishment of the state, before 48, I, I live in one of these uh, amazing cities. Uh, and there's a very different um, uh, relations between Jews and Arabs uh, within these historical mixed cities. There are public facilities that accommodate these minorities. And on the other hand, we have a very um, a newly phenomena or process of the mixed cities in the making. These are cities that um, are developing um, in the last three decades in which well-established Palestinian families move from the 75% of the segregated localities uh, to these uh, mixed urban spaces. I actually characterize this, this uh, uh, phenomena as a flight, as a what it's, it's it, it, uh, uh, coming from the white flight and the black flight in the United States because they don't they don't simply move to one place to another but they kind of escape <clears throat> from from these from these enclaves and go and and, and create these cities uh, mixed cities in the making. So. Oh, the slide itself. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. So why why do they escape? Why do they move to these mixed cities? So as I said before, seventy five percent live in in these Arab and city and, and Arab cities and villages. Um. Again, from I take it from the uh, uh, American context, these are nationally identified spaces in a sense that they are not only segregated but they are similar to the racially identified spaces in the, in the American context. These are spaces that are separate, poor, they are neglected, uh, and this type of space kind of uh, creates and reinforces these, uh, these separation and, uh, and, 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 and this poverty. So if we look at the, um, uh, the cities and the villages, the Arab cities, is, uh, the Arab localities in Israel. So you can see here the, the green spot. They are very far from the center. Center, like Israel is really small. Uh, so it's really funny to talk about center and periphery, but Tel Aviv, which is in the center of Israel and is the, is the main economic capital of, of the state. So you can see that 
Oh, my father just entered. You can see that uh, uh, the Arab localities, the green spots up there and, and down there are far from the center. But then you can say, well, we have transportation. That's true. But there's no a, a train station in any of these lo Arab localities. All the train station except Rahat in, in, in the south. Uh, only one, only one uh, um, city. It's Lahavim Rahat, yeah, yeah. It's Lahavim Rahat. It's called Rahat, uh, but it's it's really not Rahat. But again, I got this comment, so I, I I'll, I'll I'll say it. Um, but uh, so we don't have any train stations. The transportation is very limited within the Arab localities and going out of the Arab localities. Uh, so, which makes it very much difficult to arrive to the center of power uh, and to go over some sort of a, a, a social and economic mobility. As you can see here, this is a picture of, of Sakhnin, but most of the Arab localities just look the same. They are very, very crowded. Um, and this is due to the housing and special policy in Israel that was designed since its establishment by the Zionist ideology, which promoted two key prin uh, uh, principles. One is housing the Jewish immigrants who came into the state during the 50s, after the establishment of the state. Um, and the second is Judaizing the space, making the space more Jewish. So uh, for this reason, we don't have a, any a local, no, no Arab locality was established after the establishment of the state, uh, except for, again, some few Bedouin localities in, in the south. Um, the area of jurisdiction of the Arab localities is very much restricted to the built up uh, environment, which means that they cannot expand too much. Um, there are disparities in government transfer uh, and of payment and support if we uh, compare it with the Jewish localities. So the Jewish localities are, are usually much more uh, rich than the, uh, the, lo the, the Arab localities. There is no government policy of allocation of land to the Arab community. And here I, uh, I will note that 90, more than 90% of land in Israel is owned by the state. So if you want to have land for expansion and and development, you have to, it, it's, it's on public, usually on public, on public land. Another very important issue is that uh, uh, there's a lack of updated planning schemes, which would enable lawful new constructions within the Arab localities. This results in a lot of um, uh, permits, a, a lot of illegal well, the so-called illegal, because you don't have any uh, updated uh, scheme, uh, scheme, scheme plans. So de facto, when you build something, it is against the, 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 planning, the, the planning scheme. So it's illegal, and they are always also always um, oh, sorry, they are always under threat of being demolished. Um, so all of this. A motivated, um, particularly well-established families to move to what I call the mixed cities in the making. And just a, a word about the, the mixed cities in the making. These these cities, these cities uh, were established during the 50s by Carmel, Afula, and so on in order to Judaize the, spa the, 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 the space. So they are um, they they were established near Arab uh, cities and villages, and particularly their location now became became much more appealing for these families because for the Arab for the Palestinian families because they usually don't go very far away from their villages. So so they became so 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 they they moved to these homogeneous spaces, which is a, a mostly not mostly they they are populated by Jewish by Jewish communities. They were established as Jewish cities, okay? So they don't have any infrastructure or uh, facilities to accommodate the needs of, a, of any minority. Usually they have a very high standard uh, of living. Well, well, not all of them. Most of them were constructed during the 50s. Some as, how do you say, um, development towns, uh, some, uh, mainly in the south, 
uh, stayed very poor development uh, uh, towns in the north part of Israel and in the Galil, they developed much more and became uh, uh, some lost development town title and became usual cities. And some of them, well, well comparing with the, with the neighboring uh, Palestinian localities, they have much higher standard, they, they are spacious, they have a, a open a parks, but as I said before, they do not have any public facilities to accommodate a, the minority. And I write um, a, a, in the legal aspect uh, showing that is that that uh, oh, this move has other precautions, it has a, a, sorry a complications uh, on the legal discourse because we are again talking about well-established families who are moving to these newly places, and then they start to require uh, educational institutions, library, public libraries in, 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 in Arabic and, and so on. So we start seeing, and also in some cases, they move to the uh, uh, new Israel, uh, it's uh, the new Jewish National Fund. The Jewish National Fund uh, 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 properties where uh, they state that they do not sell to any, uh, to non Jew. And so sometimes they have also legal issues because uh, this racist and discriminatory uh, 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 issue um, uh, sometimes is being brought before the court and the court has to decide whether uh, to allow these, um, these families to, to purchase the land and so on. One very important thing is that uh, Jewish communities are hostile to this move, and this also we can see. So um, I'm, I will talk about the test case in Afula, where uh, starting from 18, uh, 2018, sorry, um, this, uh, the, the move of some well-established families was encountered with, uh, with a lot of resistance from the dominant Jewish community. Um, and follow, following a bit that was uh, for land, um, for marketing land that was won by, uh, by some Arab families, they started to demonstrate in Afola. You don't see here the, uh, you, you, it, it's all in Hebrew, but uh, it states that uh, Afola is only for Jewish people. Um, uh, the, it, 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 it's all um, signs um, um, focusing on the fact that Afula should be only Jewish. Okay, what's also uh, very interesting is that the mayor of Afula also took a very active stand in, in, in this issue and, and played a really important role uh, by, uh, for example, uh, restricting using city parks uh, for the Palestinian minority. So what happened after the 7th of October and the war in Gaza? So before I present the, the test case, uh, a very important uh, um, uh, thing that happened is that this resistance and hostility, hostility began to level up and, and to be much more institutionalized. So, so following the brutal uh, events on the 7th of October, there has been a wave of aggressive actions by the police forces leading to widespread arrest, arrests and detentions of the Palestinian uh, citizens of Israel. In some uh, instances, also of left Jewish activists who share posts, con uh, who share um, posts on social media of concern and solidarity for the Palestinian victims in Gaza. Now, under emergency laws uh, that provides the police and president arrest powers, hundreds have been arrested and inter interrogated. In other cases, people were fired uh, from, their, uh, from their work. Uh, students were also uh, summited for interrogation. Uh, some were suspended from their work for social media posts or just for being Palestinian. Um, so as, as I, I, I brought here some, some data from uh, Adala, I have six, seven minutes. Yeah, so I brought some data here from Adala. Adala is an independent human rights organization and legal center founded inside of Israel. 
1969. So as you can see here, and this is only data from the first month after the 7th of October attack, so about 250 arrests, interrogations, um, and uh, hundreds of detentions. These numbers are, are updated again until mid-November, and they are getting higher. They get they got higher in, in December, and, 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 and as you can see here also, there are also uh, indictments uh, submitted, so there are arrests, detentions, and in some cases also indictments that were uh, submitted against uh, simply posting uh, uh, posts concerning uh, the victims in Gaza. I'm not talking about posts that are pro-Hamas or uh, that are clearly pro-Hamas or a post that justify uh, what happened in the 7th of October. This is, in my opinion, is not freedom of speech. I'm talking about a simple, very obvious post of something like this. Like I would not, I I, I couldn't put the, put this on on my computer. Okay, so I'm talking just uh, about uh, showing solidarity to the victims in Gaza. On the other hand, there are no arrests, no interrogations, no detentions, no indictments against Jewish citizens for clear for clear inciting posts regarding regarding Gaza, and this results in selective enforcement uh, against everyone who just uh, uh, show solidarity with Gaza or even demanding a ceasefire or criticizing government policy. Uh, this issue was also, just, just to mention in a sentence, was also discussed in the ICJ uh, a couple of weeks ago where one of the decisions, let's look at um, a number three, article number three, was that, uh, uh, that Israel should take all measures to prevent and punish direct and public incitement to commit genocide or Palestine, uh, of Palestinians in Gaza. So what is the effect of all this? As I said before, uh, and when I opened my, my, my talk, um, this is why it's so important to be here and to voice a voice, because uh, the, the result is that we are totally afraid to just put uh, a sticker like this to ask for ceasefire. Uh, it's, very, um, it, it's very challenging to go out and demonstrate against, against uh, the war or even uh, to post homeless posts, as I said before. But beyond the evident um, infringement on freedom of speech, these actions have had significant repercussions also on special spatial relations between uh, Palestinians and, and Jews, particularly those who inhib inhibit the mixed cities in, in the making. And now I get to the, uh, to the, to the taste case. Okay, this is only one of the uh, consequences, but I will focus here because we are in uh, the politics. Yeah, uh, I will take for uh, five minutes. Yeah, okay, <laughs> thank you. So uh, the, test the test case is about Dr. Dalal Abu Amni. She is a Palestinian citizen uh, of the north and lives in the used to live in the northern part of Israel. She's a neuroscientist neuro, uh, and a folk singer known in the Arab community in Israel and in the Arab world. She is married to a doctor and she has two kids and they live in the mixed city of the making called Afola. Okay, so on the 7th of October, she posted this post and this is the translation. The, the, the only victor is God. The only thing is that a minute before posting this, her media, uh, her, her social media team who, uh, uh, who are from Egypt and, and uh, posted uh, uh, this post, added, I don't know if you can see it, uh, added the Palestinian flag. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the next day after this was posted on the uh, 7th of October in the evening, uh, after a, a day after that, the death threats started to come uh, by phone, by social media, uh, and finally also protest in her, uh, in front of her doorstep. Uh, she was threatened to be raped. Uh, she was, th they threatened to burn her house down, to kill her children, to get her husband fired uh, from his job as a deputy, deputy director of the local hospital. So what she did is like every normal citizen do, went to the police. 
to, to, uh, uh, to, to, have, to get charges against these incitements. But surprisingly, the police arrested her when she came to the police station, and the police claimed claiming that the Facebook uh, post amounted to an uh, illegal provocation. I have to say that in her interroga interrogation, she, she said that I didn't, I wasn't aware that they added the Palestinian flag, and I know that it, this would sound a bit uh, problematic, but for me, she's uh, a Muslim religious uh, a person, she believes in God, and she she was worried. Uh, she, she meant to say that nothing would uh, go uh, good would come from the Hamas attack or the war in Gaza that would uh, that would that would sure follow. And so, even though she took uh, her post down, she was uh, prisoned for three days. Uh, and almost since then, her life was upside down. So what happened after that? So as you can see here, uh, from uh, on a daily basis, from seven o'clock until midnight, Jewish protesters are uh, hanging in front of her uh, place with Israeli flags, as you can see here, uh, uh, having uh, uh, or have broadcasting the, her songs and shouting, "Go to uh, to Gaza." Um, we are talking about more than 40, 50 uh, people who are gathering in a daily basis uh, on this account. Um, um, the city council changed the name of her street to the IDF street. IDF is Israel Defense uh, Forces. With the municipal elections, uh, Abu Amni became a campaign issue. Uh, the city uh, website uh, the, the city website uh, um, posts the date and the uh, and, and the time of the demonstrations in in front of her house. Um, as you can see he, here, also the Star of David is was uh, posted just in front of her house. Um, you can see here you can see the very nice view, but under the view you the, the signs that are written in Hebrew. Israel only uh, entrance to Israel Israel lovers only uh, pictures of the hostages held by Hamas are being also posted I don't have here the picture of being hostage in front of their house as you can see here a construction dumpster in front of her in front of her house are also uh, uh, being uh, situated there what is important interesting in all of this is that uh, the police when she demanded the police to interfere and to stop these har this harassment. The police said this is considered a prayer service for the troops in Gaza. In some cases, the officers he came and uh, joined the demonstration. I'll finish in two minutes. Uh, um, and so you can see that the police, in some sense, are being part of, 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 of this, uh, these demonstrations. So what we, uh, what we can learn from all this, Following the 7th of October events, the horrifying uh, events of the 7th of October, the resistance and hostil hostility towards the move of Palestinian families into uh, Jewish cities and turning them into mixed cities began to level up, to have an institutionalized uh, aspect, uh, because it is now backed up with the enforcement system and the, lo and the, local, and the local government. And so another consequence of the war uh, on Gaza and limitation and crackdown of the freedom of speech, which diminishes the Palestinian minority's citizenship, which I talked about very shortly, is that the Israeli enforcement system primary, the police and the attorney general in, in collaboration with racist activists and the local government now all together are playing a very active role in reshaping spatial uh, relations during times uh, of, of conflict. And I, and I, I, I conclude with, uh, in an interview, Amal Abu Am, uh, Am, uh, Dalal Abu Amni con concluded, nothing I'm going through can compare with those who have lost loved ones in Israel and in Gaza. But yes, I don't feel secure in my home. And this is exactly the point, even though this is just one case, but um, that, that regards spatial relations, but it can have a very uh, uh, wide effect on the willingness of other well-established families to come 
to, to Afula, but more importantly, they can eventually result in the displacement of Abu Ami if she um, surrender to these attempts and, and leave her house. Thank you. We will have now five minutes. Quick, um, quick question, and we keep the hours for um, question and answer at the end. So, if if you have urgent question, if it's urgent, and you want to ignite the debate, not for half an hour. If you have quick question, we can ask Manal. Otherwise, we can keep the question for debate and discussion at the end. Please. I have one question. Thank you, Manal. Excellent. Can you tell us about the name Afula? I think Afula itself is in Arabic. Afula? It was established in the 50s, no? Yeah, but it was an old place called Afula, uh, Palestinian. Okay, so you symbolic. know better than me. This is symbolic. Um, our, uh, this, uh, but it was named Afula before the before 48? Yeah. This is the information it's that I have to check. It's villages which were Afula. As 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 in, in 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 a lot of villages inside of Israel, uh, Beit Shan is previously Bisan, so it's um, not very surprising, I guess. I, I, I wanted to understand better the the Arab only cities in Israel are a result of a self-organized mechanism because of the hostility or is it enforced? Well, yeah, that, that's a very good question and I, I wanted to, to address it. Um, the segregation in Israel, whether it's in the Jewish uh, uh, localities or in the Palestinian localities, it's it's from both sides. It's, it's, uh, it's first of all, the Arab localities existed before the, the establishment of the state, but even after the establishment of the state, there was the policy is just to keep the segregation as, as much as, as, as we can. But of course, this also accommodates the communities itself because some communities do want to have this segregation, right? Uh, but what, what my take on this issue is that you never know what you really need or what you need, really want if you didn't try another another thing. It's just we, we are born into some sort of special reality and we, grow up in this special reality but this doesn't mean that there's a, there isn't any other alternative but for your questions it's it's from both it's it's from needs for of the communities but also um, um, a result of a structured institutional policy so no mixed uh, locality was established after the after 48 mm -hmm. these localities that i look, talk about is only from a bottom a uh, bottom up a uh, process also within the Jewish community, by the way. So uh, 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 on the contrary, so we have a couple of lo uh, ultra-Orthodox localities that were established only for ultra-Orthodox uh, um, communities. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this wasn't the case before 48, when uh, especially, I imagine villages like the Western Reputation some cities, some villages were maybe dominant by Muslims, others by Jewish, but in the cities there was Muslims, but there was also a mix of the Jewish communities. Yeah, yeah, this is what I saw, that the, the mixed cities, the historical mixed cities, exactly. that some existence, Akka, Haifa, Ramle, Lod, Jerusalem itself, um, they were mixed cities even before uh, 48. Tel Aviv, Biafra, it's, it's a bit uh, complicated because Tel Aviv is, a Jew, is the first Jewish city that was uh, constructed and then they kind of moved and got with, with Biafra. But but yeah, yeah, they, they um, segregation and mixed cities were uh, were also before 48, like the the, the kibbutz and the, the, the mushav and everything, they're also segregated localities that existed before the establishment of the state. I have a question from the online audience, from Nicola Morelli, who asked uh, if schools are mixed and if there are if services, educational services are offered to both communities or not. Yeah, so uh, the educational system in Israel is also very segregated. Uh, also within uh, between Jews and Arabs and between and within the Jewish community as well. So we have secular secular 
a stream and a religious uh, stream, but uh, we have only Arab, Arab uh, educational system without um, regarding the different religious group, but similar to the mixed cities in the making, we have also initiatives bottom up of family, both Jewish and Palestinian families who uh, uh, created the bilingual uh, schools starting from, if I'm not mistaken, 97 in Misgaf in the, no in the Galil, uh, the north part of Israel, where we see more and more a mixed educational system, but they're not mixed in a sense that uh, they, 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 they learn two languages, they have two holidays, uh, so, um, so this is also a process that is, uh, is having a very uh, large resistance from the state, actually, because I said before, similar to the mixed cities, there is no uh, state policy of promoting such um, uh, such institutions. It is very good. How very do they teach history in these schools? <laughs> this is a very good question. <laughs> or what? What's the what narrative do they? Do they? Yeah. Do they well, uh, um, well, I, I I grew up in a private Christian school. Uh, in the secondary period, uh, I we didn't learn anything about the Nakba for, for example, but when I moved to the Orthodox, uh, which is a very nationalist uh, school, we did learn uh, on uh, on the Nakba, but about the Nakba, but we didn't, we don't have, we don't have it in the books. So you only learn it from your, histor your history teacher. Uh, on the Nakba day, on the 15th of May, uh, there are trips to the uh, ruined villages and, and so on, but this is not part of the state curriculum. This is totally not in, in the state curriculum. And today, this might be also considered as some sort of uh, incitement after the 7th of October. Even this can be, well, well, well this issue has been uh, attacked by, by, uh, by the state for, for, uh, for a long time, uh, depriving, for example, financial support for people who, for institutions that state the Nakba day as a morning day, a morning day. So, um, so yeah, <laughs> complicated. Okay, I think, thank you. Thank we can you. close.